I think it's fair to say that a tablet could not replace a laptop without proper mouse support. Fortunately, a Surface is not just a tablet that can replace a laptop, it is a laptop. And you can connect any type of mouse or pointing device to it that you can imagine. There is a trackpad or a touchpad on all of the Surface keyboards. They're really useful once you know your way around them, but they're really only a stand-in for a proper mouse. We'll put a link to our video on Surface touchpads below. They're pretty cool, they have multi-touch gestures, so make sure you check it out after this video. But in this video, we'll run through everything that you need to know to set up and use a mouse with your Surface. I'll show you what type of mouse I use, and we'll share a few options along the way. And just for fun, I'll share a bit of Microsoft mouse history too. So if you have a Surface or a Windows 10 device, make sure that you hit subscribe and tap that notification bell. It really helps us to bring you content like this. And we'll leave our affiliate links to the products that we mentioned in the description below too. We earn a small commission from any purchases that you make from those links, and every little bit helps us to keep this channel going. Now, there are effectively three ways to connect a mouse to your Surface. Cable, dongle, or Bluetooth. If you have a mouse with a good old-fashioned cord, well, you can just plug it right into the USB-A port on your Surface. That is, if it has one. My Surface Go only has a USB-C port, so I need a USB-A to C adapter to make that happen. But really, mice with cords, like laptops without touchscreens, they belong in the 90s. In 2021, you don't need cords tying you down, at least not unless you're a serious gamer. Many mice come with a USB-A dongle. This is a wireless mouse setup, but it relies on you plugging in a proprietary wireless transmitter into your computer. Like a wired mouse, setup is pretty simple. Just plug in the dongle and turn it on. Again, if you have a device that only has USB-C ports, like my Surface Pro X or the Surface Go, then you'll need that USB-C to A adapter, link below. There are a few downsides to using a dongle mouse. The big one is that the dongle is tied to the mouse and you generally can't buy a replacement. So losing the dongle means that the mouse is toast. It's quite a waste. We used to use these mice a lot and I ended up throwing a lot of them out because, well, the dongles got lost. The second issue is that the dongle is taking up a valuable USB-A port all of the time. Many of our modern thin devices like my Surface Pro only have one USB-A port, so I don't want a dongle blocking access to that all the time. And that USB-C to A adapter and dongle combo sticking out of the side of your device is just an accident waiting to happen. So that brings us to the third type of mouse, the Bluetooth mouse. This is undoubtedly the best mouse option for Surface since there's no cord or dongle involved. Bluetooth devices always have a Bluetooth logo on them somewhere, so you can usually tell if a mouse is Bluetooth or not. A Bluetooth mouse transmits directly to the Bluetooth radio in your Surface, so you don't need any dongles at all. Even if your Bluetooth mouse comes with a dongle, you don't need it. It's only there for computers that don't have Bluetooth built in. The downside to using Bluetooth is that you need to connect your mouse to your computer before you can use it the first time. And because of that, if you want to plug your mouse into another computer, well, you'd need to pair it with that computer, which can be a bit of a hassle. A number of modern Bluetooth mice support Swift Pair, which makes pairing really easy. Just look for the pair button on your mouse, hold it down for a few seconds, usually five to 10, and when it enters pair mode, you'll see a pop-up notification for Swift Pair on your computer. And you can click on that and connect your mouse straight away. If you miss the notification, you can always go into settings on your computer, and then devices, then add Bluetooth or other device, select Bluetooth, find your mouse from the list and click on it to connect. If your mouse doesn't show up, check that it is in pair mode. There should be an indicator light flashing on the mouse if it's in pair mode. Personally, in the office, I've been using a Microsoft Precision mouse for the last few years. It's a right-handed Bluetooth mouse that has lots of buttons and customization options. I use it because I can keep it paired with up to three computers at once and easily move between them by pressing a button. Using the Microsoft Mouse and Keyboard Center app that comes with the mouse, I'm able to customize what the buttons can do. I can also change the mouse wheel style from free-flowing to clicky. It has an internal rechargeable battery and it can be used while you're charging it. Just plug in the cable and keep working. Now, I find it lasts about three to six months without a charge. Many other wireless mice use alkaline batteries, which is fine too. For example, in my travel bag, I keep a Surface Arc mouse that runs on two 4A batteries. This mouse is super handy for travel since you can snap it flat and that turns it off when you're not using it, and then it goes straight into your bag much easier that way. 
It's very lightweight and it's ready and on when you need it. It has an invisible touch scroll wheel on the button surface and it's ambidextrous too. There are a myriad of mouse styles available, but if you've used a mouse for a long time, you'll recognize the importance of finding a good quality ergonomic mouse. If you've ever suffered from RSI or carpal tunnel syndrome, you'll especially relate to this. Your desk setup, chair and posture all play a part here, but so does a good mouse. The ergonomics of keyboard, mouse and touchpad input are inherently bad when you look at them. So you might also want to consider a trackball or a vertical mouse to minimize the repetitive movements caused by constant mouse use. I'm currently trying out the Logitech MX vertical mouse, which is similar to my Microsoft Precision mouse. It's rechargeable, got roughly the same buttons, and it's got multi-device pairing too. But it has a more vertical layout, which means that my arm twists less when I'm using it. It's right-handed only, unfortunately, but there are similar mice that cater for lefties, and we'll list some of the options for those below. Another good way to reduce the potential for RSI is to find other ways to work. For example, break up your day and use your Surface as a tablet away from the desk. It'll be good for your wrists and also for your big picture thinking too. And if you really want to go down the rabbit hole of maximum features, then check out the Logitech MX Master 3. It's very similar to my Microsoft Precision mouse, but it's got an extra thumb scroll wheel. Like the Precision mouse, it also has app specific settings for jobs like video editing and CAD and it can be paired with up to three computers. I've found that it runs flat a bit faster than the Precision Mouse, but it charges with USB-C, which I much prefer. I really like the feel of it, and I love this button on the top that can be programmed to change the mouse pointer speed, amongst other things, using the Logitech Options app. And if you're into gaming, then you need a completely different type of mouse, and probably a different type of computer too. For gaming, you need a lightweight, accurate mouse like the Glorious Model O. Anyway, now that your mouse is plugged in and set up, there are some settings that you can tweak. In the Settings app, go to Devices, then Mouse, and you can find settings to change the mouse pointer and scroll wheel speed. You can also swap between left and right-handed mode. And if you want to change your mouse pointer color or size, you'll find those settings under Additional Mouse Options, or you can stay inside the Settings app and go to Ease of Access and Mouse Pointer. So that's a quick overview of one of the most important input devices for your Surface. Like I said, there are many options if you're looking to get a better mouse, so check out those links below. I'll include some really good budget options and some more advanced options like the Logitech MX Master 3. If you trace back the origin of your Surface, you'll find a thread that leads all the way to the mouse. The hardware business inside Microsoft was formed to create the very first Microsoft mouse, 1983. Back then, computers didn't have mice, like many today don't have touchscreens and pens. The first mouse that I can remember using was the Microsoft Mouse 2.0. It connected via a serial port to our desktop computer, and underneath the mouse was not a clever optical sensor, but a heavy ball that rolled against some sensor rods. It constantly collected lint that would hinder the function of the mouse, it had to be cleaned every other day, and if it didn't, well, it was just a complete pain to use. It was actually Microsoft who brought the optical mouse to the mainstream with the very first IntelliMouse in the late 90s. That mouse also introduced the scroll wheel to the masses. The IntelliMouse was truly revolutionary, and you can still get a version of it today. So if you want to buy a piece of history, well, we'll leave a link to the current IntelliMouse below. Meanwhile, 25 years ago, Apple doubled down on the one button mouse. So intuitive. Oh, and let's not forget the burger mouse. Magical. Anyway, if you want to learn more about your Surface, Windows 10 devices, or Microsoft and computing history, then hit subscribe. And if you found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up or thumbs down, it's up to you, and it all helps. And tell us about the first mouse that you used in the comments below. There is a trackpad or a touchpad on all of the Surface keyboards. They're really useful once you know way, once you know your way. So you can usually tell if a mouth is, a mouth, a mouth is blue. Blue, this is very hard. <laughs>